Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a quick snowstorm which is going to be starting up in the Midwest then eventually making its way down into the Great Lakes and the Northeast. This is going to be one of the first big accumulations or at least significant accumulations in areas of the interior Northeast, especially for areas that are higher up in elevation. We're not going to have the snowfall forecast in today's video, but we will be discussing it today. Tomorrow we'll have that snowfall forecast just because there is still a lot of variation between each model and there is still a lot of uncertainty. We're also going to be recapping what happened over the past few hours with the snow event in the Midwest. Uh, that was the most recent one and it's actually still ongoing over parts of the Great Lakes. And then of course later on in the video we'll talk about that next storm uh, which will be moving into that same exact area. So starting it off with our weather photo of the day, this one was sent in by Francesca from central Indiana. And of course, this one's showing the tree, uh, the tree with some of the changing leaf colors and then also the bright sky and that cloud right in the middle as well. Great photo there from Francesca. And if you guys want to send in your photos, send them over to my email address, which is right down here. It's also in the description down below. Uh, and just send it in with a general location. Does not have to be a town name, nothing specific. But like Francesca did, uh, an area like central Indiana, something like that would work just so we have a general idea of where you guys took that from. And also, if you have any photos, especially of any winter type of things, so such as ice, if you get a snowstorm, anything like that, that you want to send in, uh, I would be more than happy to feature that in the beginning of the video. So especially if you guys have snow or ice photos from any current storms that are happening, send those over uh, and I'll definitely feature it in the video. So here's what the current National Weather Service page looks like. You can see that we do have some flood watches up in Oregon and Washington. We have some freeze warnings down in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, as well as some frost advisories in northern Mississippi and a little bit of Arkansas as well. We have freeze watches from eastern Tennessee all the way through much of northern Alabama and northern Georgia, as well as for one county in eastern Mississippi. Uh, we also have more red flag warnings down through Kansas, uh, Nebraska, and Colorado. Wind advisories in the light brown for parts of Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and South Dakota. And then we have high wind watches in effect for a little bit of Wyoming and Montana. We have more wind advisories and flood watches also up for parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Uh, and then looking at the extremes from yesterday, we had a 96 degree high temperature in Camp Pendleton, California, where they got again up to 96 degrees. The low temperature was tied at 2 degrees, uh, 13 miles north of White Sulphur Springs, Montana, and 2 miles southwest of Canyon Village, Wyoming. Both of those areas got down to 2 degrees. High spring fall report was in Lamont, Illinois, where they got 5.3 inches of rain. And the high snowfall report, uh, we had one uh, at six inches, four miles west southwest of War Road, Minnesota. Uh, that's right up near that, old, that little part of Minnesota that sticks up. So that one is right along the Canadian border, just a couple of miles to the south of there. And then the next one was in Britt, Minnesota, which is in northeastern Minnesota, uh, northwest of the lake shore of Lake Superior. So uh, northwest of the cities like Duluth uh, up in that area is where that six inch report was taken from so here's again just a map visualizing what happened yesterday in terms of the total snowfall uh, overall the models were fairly accurate they did depict this little spot of northeastern south dakota getting uh, an above normal amount of snowfall compared to the rest of the area uh, you also saw that accumulation this is only tracking accumulation so it does not include if you just saw flakes that did not stick on the ground uh, actual accumulation got as far south as central uh, iowa which was again pretty close to uh, the modeled forecast and my forecast and then of course we had that bullseye of 10 plus inches uh, in a few of these spots for northern Minnesota the 10 plus inch amounts are in that pink color so you can see them scattered throughout northern Minnesota and then of course you saw those two to four inch amounts for the rest of North Dakota and northern Minnesota and then one thing that I do want to point out again we had those lower amounts right along the lake shores uh, and then also as you got further to the east the amounts really uh, tailed off with this event. 
it's not over yet uh, as of right now we still do have some scattered lake effect uh, slash lingering showers from the storm so some of it is in the form of lake effect other of it is just because we have this low pressure system kind of spreading out uh, and weakening but it is still leaving over some moisture so it is cold enough to actually see snow or at least that's what this uh, radar image is uh, projecting right now that we do have some snow this is right around three o'clock uh, eastern time which would be around 2 uh, central time. Uh, so this is when this would be valid for. Uh, you, of course, have some of those showers up in northwestern Illinois, potentially bringing even some snow. Now, I would doubt that much of that is sticking. It might be uh, lightly sticking to areas like the grassy surfaces, but I don't think a lot of this is actually sticking, but it is at least making for a cool view uh, when you look outside the window or when you go outside and you see some uh, flakes flying. Uh, and I would expect that these are probably going to turn off in terms of the lake effect um, showers uh, over the next few hours. But it's at least going to be a cool sight. And this is going to be before even this next storm, uh, which we're going to talk about. So we have this system, uh, that the first one, which was, uh, again, for yesterday and this morning, uh, that's already moving out. So that's already down through the Great Lakes. Here's our next storm. This is the one that we have to pay attention to because this one could be a little bit colder and a little bit further to the south. And the reason that is, is because we already have this colder flow of northwesterly air uh, coming into the United States. So the central United States already saw that dive in the temperatures. And so now you have that environment pretty much set up perfectly uh, to see at least a quick snowstorm. Now the only thing stopping this from really exploding is that we don't have a really strong storm. So if we had a storm with the intensity of this first one coming in at the same time with the same environment as the second storm, we would probably see a lot more widespread 10 plus inch amounts. But in this case, it's going to be more of a one to three inch type of event, quick moving because of how, uh, how weak uh, and pretty much insignificant uh, this system is going to look uh, at least on the radar so you're starting off Saturday morning uh, so this will be tomorrow morning uh, with a little bit of mixed uh, ice and snow for parts of North Dakota that will continue to expand. Here's your 32 degree line. You see that this one cuts through the Dakotas into Nebraska and then it shoots back up through Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. So anywhere inside of this little pocket right here is below 32 degrees. You can see that ice. You need to be below 32 degrees at the surface to see um, freezing rain. And basically what freezing rain is, is it's going to appear like it's just raining, but as soon as it hits, uh, especially metal surfaces uh, or concrete surfaces, or anything that's uh, a little bit uh, harder instead of grass, uh, once it hits those type of surfaces, it does start to just add up as ice. It instantly freezes because the surface is colder than the upper atmosphere. And this is what we're seeing. Uh, in the upper part of the atmosphere, your 32 degree line is all the way over here. So it's where the snow begins. So here's your 32 degree line higher up and then in that pink line and then in the black line, that's the surface one. So when you have that, uh, when you have that overlay, that means that you're going to have to have some amount or at least some area of freezing rain, unfortunately. So central North Dakota might get in on some light freezing rain. Eastern parts of the state could get in more on the snow. Moving through Saturday afternoon, you still have some fairly light to moderate snow showers in the Dakotas and Minnesota. This is now going to start to move further to the south. Here is your low pressure center. So it's right over uh, North Dakota. Good thing uh, with this is that we're not dealing with the same intensity of the winds that we saw in the plains for yesterday. So it's not going to be as windy. It will still be somewhat windy, but it's not going to be as windy as it was previously. Uh, that storm is going to continue to move move on further to the southeast. Here's your 32 degree line. So again, you have a fairly consistent 32 degree line where uh, the snow is pretty much aligning uh, fairly close uh, with that 32 line. Uh, it is maybe spilling a little bit over the southern edge of that. But again, for the majority of these areas, if you are going to see snow with this event, you're probably going to be at 34, 33, 32 degrees instead of what we saw with the most recent event uh, that was up in Canada and in uh, North Dakota and Minnesota and South Dakota. Uh, what we saw there was I had actually had a few people comment down below uh, in the comment section while the storm was happening that it was not sticking all that well 
up in Canada and also I got a couple of reports from uh, the Midwest as well that it was not sticking at, at least initially for a couple hours and again I did talk about that on the channel some of these models are going to show 10 12 14 whatever amount of snowfall uh, that that high amount of snowfall but in reality it's not all going to stick because, again, we are still uh, relatively early into the season, uh, and we also don't have that immediate source of cold air. So that's not really set in, uh, and we're still getting used to that cold air, and that pattern is not set into uh, the United States just yet so far this winter. So moving this on to late Saturday night into early Sunday morning, we have light snow uh, covering parts of central and northern Minnesota as well as parts of Wisconsin and maybe even moving into Illinois. So for those of you who live in Iowa, southern Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska, you guys, instead of being on the colder side like you were last time, now you're actually on the warmer side because you're south of the storm. So it's going to be very difficult to see any snow that would accumulate south of the center of the system. Uh, and in this case, we have a storm that's tilted uh, facing the northeast. So your uh, actual snowfall, your precipitation tilted to the northeast. Uh, and that means that we're not going to actually have too much. We're going to actually have a fairly dry pattern as you get further to the south of the storm. So uh, these areas, again, are not going to see too much snow once you get south of that storm. It's pretty much all going to be north of the system uh, where you're going to have most of that snow. So moving this on to more of a view of the Great Lakes, you can see that we have by early Sunday morning, morning some snow showers into the up of michigan uh wisconsin and then even some mixed precipitation as far south as indiana and the lower peninsula of michigan that's going to continue on so now your low pressure center is into uh northern illinois uh, and southern wisconsin so it's right over here and we have again that mixed snow and ice or uh, mixed precipitation over this entire area now also notice that we have a colder pattern uh to the west of the storm and then also on the eastern edge so we kind of have this little uh, horseshoe formation in the middle where you have a little bit of warmer rising air, but to the east of there, you have a pool of cold air, and this is where it gets messy because th in these type of scenarios where you have cold air ahead of the system, this is where you can get into those ice uh, storm scenarios. It does not look like we're going to see that here because the storm is not nearly as strong as you would need it, but watch out in the winter, uh, later on in the winter, so let's, we're talking about more late December, January, February, watch out for these type of storms where you have 32 degree plus temperatures in the Ohio Valley and below 32 degree temperatures in the Northeast because this is the type of scenario where you see your massive ice storms in areas like West Virginia, Western Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Those areas get their big ice storms from these type of scenarios because you have cold air moving uh, right over uh, the, the warmer air which is actually lower down in the atmosphere uh, in these type of scenarios. So this is where you get those big ice storms. Good news is that we're not going to see any of that uh, from this system, but again, just watch out for that later on in the winter because if you see that setup, that could be a, a sign for trouble, especially as we get further into January and February. This system is going to continue to slide on through. So this is uh, by later in the morning hours on Sunday. Uh, we have mixed precipitation for Michigan and the rest of the Great Lake region. And then into the interior parts of the northeast, you're going to start to see some of that snow uh, break out, light to moderate for the most part. We're not going to be seeing anything really that significant. But into, the, uh, into parts of eastern West Virginia, western Maryland, western Pennsylvania, uh, maybe southern New York, we could be dealing with some snow. It's really going to be for uh, areas in, again, northern Pennsylvania. You get into the Catskills, the Adirondacks, uh, the Green Mountains in Vermont, the White Mountains in New Hampshire. Uh, those areas are where you're going to be dealing with the snow. Uh, you're really not going to see anything if you live in the coastal region of the northeast. But once you get inland uh, by a few dozen miles, you guys will definitely get in on a little bit of snowfall. So moving this on to Sunday evening into Monday morning. Morning, we have your low pressure center all the way over here now notice that we have a very shallow layer of cold air we have little pockets of 32 uh, or lower temperatures, but they're mainly in higher elevation spots. It's a very isolated area or a very small area uh, relative to the size of the storm that's actually below 32 degrees. So we're dealing with a fairly big area that's above 32 degrees, but still seeing snowfall. That would include southern New York and northern Pennsylvania. So you have to counter that with having at least some amount of shallow cold air uh, in the upper part of the atmosphere. So even if it's 33 or 34 
uh, in the surface areas, you would need to be below 32, probably m maybe minus two, minus three Celsius, uh, two or four or two to four thousand feet up to actually get some uh, snowfall to fall down and actually accumulate. So it's a fairly shallow layer of cold air. We don't have a lot of sub freezing temperatures down in these areas. Moving this on to Monday early in the morning, so right around 1 or 2 a.m. Eastern time, we're dealing with some snow still up for parts of the Adirondacks, the Catskills, uh, into parts of the Green and White Mountains in Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, even into the, into the Berkshires, and then also through northern Maine as well, where we have that snow starting to break out. So for those of you who are in Vermont, uh, I know I have a few viewers from Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, I would say you have to get into those inland areas. You have to get away from uh, the big coastal, uh, the big areas around the river, uh, right around the border of New York and Vermont. Those areas are definitely going to be warmer by a few degrees. So you get around Burlington, Plattsburgh, you guys probably are not going to be dealing with any snowfall out of this, maybe some mixing, but you get inland of those areas and you get uh, further into the forested areas and the mountainous areas of Vermont and upstate New York and New Hampshire and you guys will certainly get in on at least a little bit of light to moderate snowfall uh, and the reason that's happening is because again look at these temperatures they're below 32 in the mountains and then you go to the valley regions and you're probably around 35 35 36 degrees so it's a little bit warmer uh, as you get lower uh, down in elevation Monday again very early in the morning this is all before 6 a.m you have that snow so you're gonna probably have to wake up on Monday morning quickly shovel up the snow and then uh, go to work or school or wherever you have to be especially if you live in parts of the interior northeast or northern New England uh, it's gonna be a quick one to four inches of snowfall for these areas one to four maybe two to five inch snowfall event for these spots depending on your elevation so here's for the Midwest, and we're just going to quickly compare different models for just the Midwest, and then we'll look at the Northeast in terms of the snowfall. So this is over the next couple of days through Sunday and Monday, uh, you can see that we do have uh, quite a bit of snowfall into North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan. We have a fairly big swath of about four to six inches of snowfall uh, according to this model. Now, I would cut off some of this snowfall, especially down here. I don't think all of this is going to properly accumulate. So I would say cut these numbers in half in that black circled region. To the north of there, I don't think you're going to have too difficult of a time accumulating because according to these models, or at least from the initial projections, you guys should be below 32 degrees while it is snowing. So there really won't be too much uh, issue with the accumulation. Moving this on to the GFS model, uh, you can see fairly similar. It's not as far to the west, so we still have some issues in terms of North Dakota and South Dakota on whether they'll get in on a significant amount of the accumulation. But for the rest of this area, for Minnesota, Wisconsin, you're looking at a good four, five inch snowfall event over a fairly wide area uh, and then if we look at what the National Weather Service is showing they're kind of showing a blend of both of them uh, and they also have the lower amount so they're not being uh, as aggressive as some of these models they are showing two to four inches over these areas uh, and that goes through Monday morning so here to be for the northeast and what we're expecting from about Michigan on eastward. You can see that again, western Michigan, you guys are going to get lake effect. Uh, so, of course, that's usual for those areas. You're going to have a westerly and actually more of a northwesterly breeze uh, coming down into those areas, especially on the back end of the storm. Uh, so do not be surprised if for Monday, uh, probably more Sunday night into Monday, you would see probably some amount of snowfall uh, right around 2 to 5 inches according to this model. And then... We have also some higher amounts of snowfall into the elevated regions of the interior northeast, two to four inches for those spots. The Adirondacks, maybe four to six, and then you get up into the green and white mountains of Vermont, and depending on your elevation, you could be anywhere from about two to six inches of snowfall. Uh, and again, you would have to subtract some amount from this. I think it's uh, overdoing some of the uh, total amounts of snowfall, uh, but overall, it's giving you a general idea of how much to expect. For those of you who live in southern Canada, uh, 
areas like Toronto and Montreal, I'm not expecting uh, any snowfall really. Uh, if you live up in Quebec City, uh, you might see a dusting to two inches of snowfall. Uh, and then you, especially if you get northwest of Toronto, there are a few pockets and also northwest of that Quebec City Montreal corridor. Once you get northwest of there or even to the southeast of there, uh, that's where you might get in on some heavier amounts of snowfall, two to six inches. But uh, again, you would have to get away from those bigger populated areas and further to the south or to the north of those spots. Here's a look at the GFS and uh, the GFS is not as precise as the European, but overall it has a fairly similar idea. I think this probably is not going to happen. Uh, it is possible, but Again, I don't think it's too likely that you see those hive amounts in southern Michigan and northern Indiana, at least as of right now. But for the rest of this, for the northeast, it's looking fairly similar, maybe not as much for northeastern Pennsylvania. That's really the only thing uh, that I noticed different on this. Uh, and then one disclaimer here, this only goes through early Monday morning. So this will not include anything after that. So some of these uh, amounts in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine are not complete uh, as of right now, but the National Weather Service is showing at least a dusting to a couple inches in these spots. Uh, northwestern Pennsylvania, southwestern uh, New York looking at two to five inches of snowfall. Michigan as well getting a good decent chunk of snowfall, uh, especially in western and northern Michigan. Uh, and then again, the bigger questions are going to be what's going to happen for some of the lower Great Lakes. That's where I think we have more uncertainty. And then also what's going to happen and down here because there is some uh, inconsistency on the GFS and what the National Weather Service is showing compared to what the European model is showing. So we'll still have to see. The National Weather Service is uh, usually a little bit more hesitant to put out higher amounts of snowfall and it really depends on where you are. So for example, if you live in Tennessee, for example, and you get a snowstorm, the National Weather Service there is probably not going to give you a as high of a snowfall amount, even uh, even compared to other areas. So, for example, if that same snowstorm were to happen in Minnesota, the National Weather Service up there would be less hesitant to put out, uh, let's say, a winter weather advisory or a winter storm warning, and they would be less hesitant to put out some of those higher numbers of snowfall because some of those areas are more used to it. As of, uh, let's say, an area in Tennessee, just as an example, where you would be less used to that, they're going to be more hesitant to put up uh, those higher amounts of snowfall until probably the day of or the day before. That's simply something that I noticed also for areas, let's say, in the Mid-Atlantic and the coastal northeast, they do the same exact thing. They'll wait until 24 to 48 hours of the storm, and then they'll put out the amounts higher, uh, especially if it's a urban area because they don't want to get more people upset if the forecast is wrong, and you see that really well in some of these snowstorm events you'll see that some of these snow amounts in washington dc are going to be much lower compared to even what they actually get uh and the national weather service will be way more hesitant than let's say the national weather service up in vermont or new hampshire will be to put up a good amount of snowfall so uh i don't really look at this in terms of seeing how much snowfall especially three days out i don't think this is going to be the most accurate thing to look at because uh, they're going to be more hesitant depending on exactly where you are to put out a accurate amount of snowfall uh, just because they don't want to get any of the flack in, in case they are wrong. So that's just one thing I noticed, especially after covering some of these storms for a couple of years, you do notice that at least some National Weather Service offices are a lot more hesitant to put out some of those higher amounts of snowfall. So here's the uh, upper air map, just as a quick uh, look and refresher of what's happening. Your, sor your next storm is going to come out right from here. This is the initial one that went through the Midwest this uh, this past couple of days, and now that's going to be exiting further to the east. So watch out for this little trough over here in British Columbia. That'll be moving further to the east. So. And that system moves from uh, British Columbia, and then by Sunday, it's all the way uh, down into the Midwest. We're dealing with uh, snow and rain over these areas, uh, and we have a general uh, colder source of air. All of our cold air by this point is still coming in uh, from uh, either Greenland uh, for some of these areas or from the northwestern part of Canada. So we don't have that direct source of cold air straight from the Arctic Circle, 
because we have this little area of ridging over here. So this is kind of disrupting the whole pattern. If this was not here and we just had cold air spilling down into the uh, in the eastern United States, it would be much colder than it is right now. But because of this little block in the system, uh, we're not going to be able to get that direct source of uh, natural cold air. So it's going to have to be coming from either northwestern Canada, which is not as cold, or from areas like southern Greenland, which again is not as cold as the Arctic Circle. Now, looking at this uh, as well, you can see your first system uh, or your second system right there. Your first one is uh, all the way out in New England by this point. This is Sunday morning. And then by Monday, uh, you can see that trough deepens into the eastern United States. We have your low pressure center right there uh, into the mid Atlantic. And then and that eventually would move up through New England. Now that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you have any questions or comments or you want a personal forecast for your area, just leave a comment uh, down below and I'll be responding within a few hours of you posting that. Uh, we'll have your snowfall forecast for this event probably uh, tomorrow morning uh, or tomorrow afternoon. So. We're going to have your snowfall, your official snowfall forecast for this whole storm, uh, at least for the Midwest and Great Lakes part of the storm uh, by tomorrow. And then I'm going to see whether I'm going to hold off on making the northeastern section of the system uh, with a snowfall forecast just yet, uh, because I want to make sure that, of course, the models are agreeing and that I at least feel confident putting that one out. So I might wait a, maybe a day or two more to put it out for the northeast. We'll have to see, though, if most of the models are agreeing, then I'll probably just put it out with the rest of the uh, forecast. So uh, that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, and again, we're going to have a bunch more of these snow forecasts, at least if the pattern keeps up. If we continue to get this rate of snowstorms, then it's definitely going to be fun. It's going to be active and it's going to be uh, interesting uh, to track all of these. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.